I've got it's recording, but I won't I'll I won't um start it in the actual video until I do the whole hey it's thanks for watching another video mm -hmm. and Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Around the World from Touchscreen. And today we are talking with Italy. Whoa, oh, just bump the microphone then. We're talking with Italy. Um, how are you going? I just want to introduce yourself and tell us um, a bit about you and a bit about you in your involvement with Italy Touch Football. Yeah, sure. Uh, cheers. Thanks for, uh, for taking the time. Um, my name is Charlie and uh, yeah, I'm part of the uh, kind of Italia Touch uh, team. At the Italian touch scene and uh, uh obviously born and raised in, in London but uh, have been living out here in Italy for about 10 years now um so uh got introduced to touch and came to kind of know the game out here in Italy um not in the UK and uh yeah so it's been a a long kind of uh, almost nine years now of playing touch and kind of coming to understand the game on a on a you know much much uh, deeper level and um then playing in the you know the club level the european level and this year with the world cup will be a completely new thing for um a lot of us so yeah. um yeah it's, it's just a, a constant kind of growth yeah awesome so which um you said you're playing in the italy team which team or do you only have one team no we've got two teams uh two like teams? we did in the euros uh yeah we've got the um mixed open and the mixed 30 category yeah and which one so are you I'll playing, playing in? in the, uh, I'll be playing in the mix 30 because, yeah, I'm oh, okay. getting on a bit now. So, uh, yes, yeah. okay. Because um, <laughs> oh, I've got the, I always have the, um, not so much the draw, but the pools um, of all mm -hmm. divisions up in front of me in the mixed open. The team that I'm involved with are playing Italy. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I was like, well, oh, I'm we, sure. I'm sure. Yeah. We've been going up against each other, but um, no, you're with the, the mix 30. So. That's it's fine. Nice, so you, yeah. you said you started playing touch when you moved to Italy. Was that a a um yeah, accident yeah. thing, or did you go looking for touch football? Or um, I suppose I'd have to say by accident. I uh, I was playing rugby. I come from fifteens, uh, uh, which I played back in the in the UK, and um, then yeah, I was looking for a club kind of desperately when I came out here to to Italy. And luckily, the part of Italy that I'm in is the the rugby part of Italy. Uh, up in the north near near Venice, and um, yeah, struggled to kind of make it fit with the schedule. And I was playing, you know, casually um, with a kind of lower lower level team. And then yeah, just through complete uh, circumstance, met a um, what is now the coach of the team, um, and he introduced me to the the team. But it was a much much more casual thing at the time, um, and we weren't playing any kind of ranking or or league. Uh, style matches and it's only in the last kind of uh, six years I'd say five six years that we've uh, taken it kind of to the next level and started competing in the the, the national championships and everything so. yeah okay so like uh, does that include do you play in the Euros have you played well have you played in a World Cup before did you play in any previous ones no so uh now through you know having played with other players around Italy, that obviously the Italy, Italian team was was at the last World Cup, so I've heard plenty about it in uh, in Malaysia and the, the crazy temperatures and stuff. Oh, but, uh, yeah. yeah, so so we, I personally have never played in World Cup. This would be my uh, my first one. Um, but as my a club, too. we competed. All oh, right, okay, perfect. <laughs> we uh, we competed in the the European Championships in twenty twenty two in Elche. I think it was in, in Spain. And then last year, because uh, there was the conflict, well, kind of overlap with the uh, national Euros, the club Euros was kind of reduced to a much smaller tournament, but it was in Valencia in, in Spain. Um, and we competed, but with a, a different club there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, one way or another, um, kind of three European uh, championships. And, yeah, this will be the first World Cup. Which is okay. obviously a, a massive step up coming uh, coming up okay. against uh, 
Southern Hemisphere teams. So yeah. Yes, and I've, I've so I've got the senior mixed draw up at the moment. Um, did you play in the Euros? Yeah. Did you say? Yeah, the Euros last uh, last year. Yeah. Did you play the one before when it was at Nottingham? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Italy did, but I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm interested to see some like everyone. I'm asking feedback for anyone that sort of played at the same venue where the World Cup's at. Um, but oh, I've, no, I've, I've, yeah. heard, <laughs> I've heard only good things. Mm-hmm. But they, they look after yeah. the fields really, really well. Yeah, from what I've heard, it's pretty much the, the, the hub of, uh, of uh, English, so I, English touch and stuff. So. I, have, um, I have seen you mixed. The, the pool's up. Oh, we've got a, we've got a guest. Yeah, we've got a guest. Yeah, <laughs> is that who is that who you were expecting, or is that just it? It is. It is okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Just wait for it. There we go. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> hey, Shadi. Hi. I hope my internet works well. I'm in an airport at the moment. Oh, in the airport. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Okay. Well, um, thanks. Thanks this for joining. Is, this is, uh, this this... Is, uh... <laughs> thanks for joining on such short notice. <laughs> Sorry. No, actually, um, thank you for having me. No, not a problem. Did you want to just um quickly? So, what we've done is um just introduce ourselves and just say like what you do. Um, I don't know if you can talk loud because you're in an airport, but you just say what you do with Italy Touch, like what team you're playing with or anything like that. Yeah, well, uh, I'll play in the senior mix for the World Cup with Charlie mm-hmm. here. Yeah, and uh, in Italy in the Italian club, I play for the same club as Charlie uh, in Scambio in Padova. Not sure if he, if he's given you a little bit of like a background. I'm not that far yet. Yeah. Next not yet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, not yet. <laughs> um, and I also play in Belgium. Well, I'm live between Brussels and uh, Belgium and Italy, so I play in a club in Brussels as well. Celtics. Oh, the Celtics. Yep. Okay. So I have spoke with yeah, Belgium, I, and they did. I yeah, I watched the I watched the podcast with them. Uh, Tish actually plays with me. Uh, oh, really? She's my Head coach in the club, yeah. Oh, there you go. Is she a good coach? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I was like, oh, have you got anything? To... Any, <laughs> any no, no, information? No, great, person, great uh, no, no, great coach, great, great no, uh, awesome. teammate. She's uh, she's come to Italy to to visit my club in Italy as well. Um, no, no, I'm lucky with my clubs. Well, that's awesome. So, well. It's funny you've just come on at the right time because I was just telling Charlie that I've got the um the senior mix draw up now or not the draw but it's just who you're playing and I ask this to everyone if there's any sort of um is this your first World Cup? Yeah, it's Charlie. Yeah, it's your soul. We're all on our first World Cup. That's that's exciting. Uh, is there any game that you're really looking forward to or any team that you're looking forward to versing slash meeting? It's a question What's for both of you. That's you, Shannon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, New Zealand for me. Uh, yeah, uh, just uh, I think I'm, you know, quite excited to play against them. We have another one. We have another one. <laughs> yeah, the whole nation this, on this, this, this is what happens with, uh, with, with our team, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's this, yeah, you never know what's, what's going to happen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Charlie comes on, I'm like, yeah, well, well we other, could... nation, other nations are doing more than two. And he's like, well, hold on a minute. Gets the phone out and just <laughs> yeah, gets exactly. everyone in. <laughs> Thought that Hello. I Hi. Hey, Zampi. Hey, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Thank so you very much. Just come in at the right time. So... The others have just introduced themselves and told them sort of what they're doing in Italy touch at the World Cup. Um, did you want to do the same thing? Just say a quick okay. introduction? Yeah. On the spot. Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Carlo. Um, I'm playing uh, touch in Italy. I'm not playing with the national team, though. Um, I'm playing in a, in a club, same, cl- same club as Charlie and, and Shadi in Padova, um, language exchange. Um and yes, I'm a player there. Um, I'm also helping the team uh, when we have to organize like trips to tournaments and so on. And um, recently, um, I've been introduced in the board of the team. So also, I'm helping Shadi and the coaches in organizing and managing the team stuff. More of like an administrator role. 
Yeah, yeah. Without without those people, and a developing happens. ref, passionate and ref. developing ref as well. You're a yeah. referee, yeah, also. Yeah. yeah, I'm an L one by now, uh, but I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I had some experience also internationally, and mm-hmm. I hope to um, go on and level up soon. Oh, awesome! That's that's good. It's we we don't have many ref. We have had some referees on the channel, but we don't have many. But I'll ask you a couple of questions oh. later, specific referee questions that um you can you can do your best to answer. You don't have to answer it if you don't want, but it's it's more. No, he knows all of it. He knows all of it. So it's, it's, it's fine. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, we're just talking about the um, Shadi. You said uh, New Zealand. Uh, you're really looking forward to playing New Zealand. Uh, is that because that you see them as sort of a, a benchmark team? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I think for many Europeans, it's New either New Zealand, Australia. We were lucky enough to um, to have New Zealand in uh, in our pool. I mean. It'd be obviously a tough game, <laughs> so yeah. I'm I'm quite stressed. But uh, it'll be amazing. I mean, the level will be will be quite quite high. So, but I have to say, in general, we have an interesting pool. Yeah. Oh, oh and I was just literally talking. Um, like as in, we stopped talking 15 minutes before this one started. It was chilly, and I was talking to two people from the senior mixed in the chilly team, uh, who is in your pool. And they were saying how much they're going to well, smash. Yeah. They're, they're saying they're going to smash Italy. Italy's going to be. It's going to be twenty nil, and Italy. Are, they're going to go home <laughs> crying. That's all they were saying. No, they were. We heard. Were, we heard really their nice. prediction is to end fifth in the in the world. We have actually a Chilean Italian in our team, the senior mix. Well, Chilean resident in Italy, to be fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, he he was back in Chile this winter. Uh, met the team i don't know if the open mixer is senior mix and mm-hmm. i know chile is quite uh, um well competitive and amb- ambitious in the road to the world cup we we don't know the team that well to, to be honest so i'm not sure what to expect okay well i'm involved with um china so you, you're playing china as well um I'm, I'm involved more so the mixed open but i have done some work with the senior mix so that'd be good um and fiji like we i always get excited when i see fiji because i've I don't know if you guys have ever been to Fiji, but every person that you see in Fiji is just a an athlete, just because they're just always just doing physical labor and 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 stuff in Fiji. That everyone is just so fit and fast, and they're just they they're athletes. So hopefully they can get around the financial barrier and 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 send like you look at rugby sevens how dominant they are at that. If they can get a, a good touch football team, they'll be very good. And well, Cook Islands, they're based in Australia, if, to, to my knowledge, um, based in Sydney. So it should have some pretty good games. I'm looking at um, yeah, we know. something. This this is this yeah, isn't really yeah. a, this is isn't really a touch football question, but the flags of Italy compared to the flag of Ireland, they're not very different, are they? <laughs> It's it, it's uh it's it's red and orange and on uh, on on the we, website it doesn't re- render particularly well. No. Okay. Uh, well, we have the same problem with the New Zealand flag. Yeah. The Australia New Zealand flag yeah, looks yeah. similar. Now I'm looking yeah, at I think yeah, it was, yeah. there's another one. I think it's like Germany and Belgium flag is very similar yeah. and stuff like that. So there you go. The, one's the, the, one's the rival the rivalry of the flags. <laughs> That's just something I just noticed then yeah. because I'm looking at them yeah. now. They're next to each other. If you have an Italian flag out in the uh, in the sun, uh, <laughs> it can very that red can very often change to orange very easily. And yeah, yeah, like I support, can imagine. Yeah, supporting Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, in preparations for the World Cup. Um, how does training go? Like, um, are you sort of lucky in the sense that most of the players come from the same area, or is it scattered around the whole country where you can only train sort of? certain amount of times how, how does that work what should i go on this one mate okay um yeah uh it's i mean <laughs> when you compare it the size of italy to the size of australia i mean everything's close um so uh yeah uh or, or even you know a country like uh, even france you know is probably if they've got players from different regions it's significantly more difficult um we tend to have, I don't know, I would say the majority of the players from the north of Italy. 
um, with obviously some exceptions. So uh, the majority of the, 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 the meetups, the national trainings are done across the north of Italy. Although our last one was further south. Um, but yeah, numbers vary. Everyone's got their own commitments, particularly, you know, when you get to the, the mixed 30s, people have got kids and families and stuff as well. So trying to find a, a whole weekend to go and train together is, is not, a, not an easy thing to do. Um, so, you know, we, we get together, we stay over on the Saturday night and get as much training in as possible. But it's as much uh, to do with getting to know each other as it is, you know, running through moves or defensive sets. Um, so it, it, it's a challenge as much as it is as it is for any other nation, I think. Um, yeah, of course. I can only speak for the, for the older group, as I say, but uh, yeah, is, um, not easy. Is like touch football or touch rugby, however it's called in Italy, is it sort of mainly popular in one city um, or is it sort of there's different areas to play touch around Italy? Like what I was just talking with Chile and they said that it's all in Santiago, it's all in their capital. Is it a bit like that in Italy or... If I was to say move to looking at the map, where can I use an example? Rome as compared to Milan, like would they be touched yeah, both, so both there? Rugby, um, so yeah, I know you guys call it touch footy. Um, but yeah, touch rugby for us is it kind of follows where rugby is is, is big anyway. Um, just naturally, one you know flows from the other. Uh, even though they're not particularly that connected. Um, so the north of Italy. So going across from Turin all the way to Venice is a good place to start. So Turin, Milan, um, Bergamo, Brescia, uh, Verona, all the way through there um, is, is a good... Uh, is where I'd say the majority of the clubs are and the majority of the, the interest is in, in rugby. Um, Rome, obviously, being the capital, there is also a couple of clubs down there that are um have been there either for a while or there's a couple of i think there's a new club that's just started there as well um and then down in uh naples there's another club as well uh and some some in the last year some more clubs come cropping up around the kind of central italy area but if you want the clubs that have been around for a while they're all well in the north northern the north. italy yeah, yeah. So you've got, you know obviously by the sounds of it, it's it's growing. Then, if you're saying like sort of this, we like I guess you can call them spot fire like um, clubs just sort of yeah. appearing, and I guess that's probably a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, something that we desperately need here in Italy as well. Yeah, we need more and, interest and in the sport. Well, 24, 24 or twenty-five teams now. That's cool. That's good. Um, do you find are all the World Cup players though from the north of Italy? I no. would say and referees. Uh, <laughs> referees, no. like I have no idea. <laughs> no, come on, Marco is Charlie. there. Charlie from Tatroma. He's um. Yeah, but I don't know where they are. head. From. Yeah, the the head ref. Well, the ref is the head ref of Italy, which is the ref coming to the World Cup. Um, he plays for Tatroma, so for for the Rome team, and we have a few players coming from Rome, in the open mix and a few one or two i think in the over 50 men 50 um oh, yeah. so <laughs> so no i mean yeah majority majority yeah uh, from the north but not all of them i think maybe even in the selection uh i mean i'm, I'm not sure but I, maybe coaches have looked into that as well not that you know <laughs> or even the selection for us uh, it, it, it's connected a lot to to finances as well so Depends mm. how many players are available to cover such such budget. Yeah, of course. Okay, so another ref question now. Um, you said before you are a L1? Yeah. I'm guessing that means level one? Yeah, level one, yeah. Do you follow sort of – how many levels do you have in Italy? Are you sort of more of the, following the normal international thing? Is there five levels? Um. Well, yes, but actually there is no, if, if I'm not wrong in Italy, we don't have no referees over level three. So we just have referees level one, level two and level three. Um, but yeah, the, the, then the, obviously there's 
the possibility if one is committed then to to go and, and improve and level up to 12, level four and level five for sure. And to do that, is it that you have to go to a World Cup or do you have to do like um, Euros or something like that? Um, I guess, uh, yeah, international uh, tournaments like Euros and World Cup give you uh, caps that helps you um, in, in improving your 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 skills, your ability, and also giving you much more um, um, experience experience uh, that that brings you to then to to have a an elf, an, a level four or level five badge. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because we have um, in Australia, we have six levels. They've been talking about trying to do what everyone else is doing and go to five but it's just the transition would be too difficult um our sort of levels you can go <clears throat> one and two are kind of um interchangeable like um to referee at a senior tournament you need to be a level two so you're not really a level one for very long um you can get your three um at, at any tournament um but to get a level four uh you have to show 12 months of commitment to refereeing um, but then you're awarded um, a level four badge. You get a, a blazer and you get a number. So every every person that gets to level four has a number. It's a state number. Uh, and then you get invited to our nationals. So to referee our nationals, you must be a level four. And that's where you can get your level five and six. But to get to a World Cup, you must be a six. So you've kind of got to get as far as you can locally before you're invited overseas. That's just how that's how we do it, and because it's sort of in twos, one and two, then three and four, then five and six, is sort of going back to five levels. We're just not sure how to do it without sort I of mean, breaking in, uh, in Europe breaking the formula. You need level four to go to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. That's what I that's what I understood, and I also uh, I don't know how recently, but uh, the transition to level three and four has changed a little. That you have to be. Um, I think Kabe was you uh, telling me that you have to be sponsored or, or no, uh, actually was a teammate here. You have to be sponsored from a okay. ref from another country. Well, okay. I think ours so ours is only yeah. ours is only level like the highest level to be at a World Cup because we just have so many referees that are a level six, and it wouldn't make sense picking a level five when a level six is available. So, I think just to just stop any drama there. That's that's how they do it. But a, 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 a topic that it's just could, in Italy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but a topic that we were on when I was talking with Ireland is about we were talking about rules that we'd like to tweak or change. Have you ever spoken about? Oh, gee, I wish I wish this rule was done like this, or I wish this rule didn't exist. Or I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but has have you ever thought about that or spoken about that before? It's just something that really interests me because there's 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 things that bug me in with the rules. Uh, well, to be fair, I mean, the, I, yeah. Sorry, no, no, it's up here. Uh, sorry, I okay, probably okay, should have so warned you. This is a weird question. It's not a normal question that I ask, but we've got a referee. I so. leave this to the guys. I I mean I'm uh never thought about that, uh, but actually. I mean, in my opinion, the rules as they are now, uh, they are, um, they are pretty much enough to make the 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 game enjoyable and 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 fun. So I don't see any points, any yeah, any one of the rules that should have been changed. That's a rough answer. Removed. No, I mean, also as a player, I don't want to hurt the sponsors. Also, also as a player, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't find any any of the rules so strict or so annoying that I, I would like to, for them to be changed or removed. I don't know, Charlie, what what thinks about that? Maybe, Char Charlie, why are you called? Sorry, Nagaro Education. In the... Sorry, it's yeah, it's it's my yeah, it's it's my um. One of the companies I'm working with. I Sorry, know. I just pointed out that I, 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 that's, I, yeah, that's I the great display. I didn't. I'll have that in the uh, 
I'll have it in the description. I'm talking with Nagata Education from Italy. <laughs> education, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Can I? I can't change it. Can I? No. I'm pretty uh, sure. No, I don't think so. Any anyone who you lives around me would be fooled into thinking that that was an Italian name. Probably. Oh yeah, you can. <laughs> so... If you click, if you click Charlie on the three dots next to your name, you can say rename. But it's not important. I just. Uh, just an observation. OCD, I guess. Yeah. yeah. A rule, um, <laughs> Carla. A rule. A rule that um. Oh, it's not changed. It's just tweaked. Would be when there's like a few seconds left in the game, and you might be attacking the line. Teams will just refuse to make a touch until the hooter goes. I would like to see that once the hooter goes, you're allowed one phase of play. So one dump, you are still allowed your last dump, and then you can play off the phase. It'll stop teams just avoiding making the touch. So when the hooter goes, you can't do anything. And then they just go up and make the touch and then the game's or well, the half's over. I think once the hooter goes, you're in you should be entitled to one more phase of play. So it's not well, so much a change um, of rule, it's just a mm -hmm. uh, well, I never thought about that, but uh yeah, it could be because because for example, I don't I don't see that at least um, in Italy, I've never seen oh, that. Like, so we actually the, we the, actually have a we have a call for it. So if we're defending okay. the line, and there's 15 seconds left, we just yell out "jockey," which is riding out the half, um, which means okay. we will we'll give away a penalty because we're not moving forward. But the clock's okay. going to run out before we give away three penalties and have players in the bin. So we just go, we'll just give away penalties then, and it kind of. It's kind of not really in the spirit of the game. Yeah. Whereas if you allowed I them see. one more phase and they got their dump, we would still have to defend normally. And uh -huh. it just it just really avoid that sort of negative play of defense. That's just something yeah, that no, bugs. The... It's just something that bugs me. That's all. <laughs> yeah. No, I've never. As seen you can see, as you can see, I'm really passionate by... about it. Yeah, but by Italian teams, I've never seen that. I mean, when when we hear the the hoos, everyone goes like, "Oh, let's touch him because it's the last one." <laughs> well, not everyone. So, I can name a few no, players in our own team that will I mean, step around any player in front of them to get the last score. No, no, no. I'm I'm speaking from from a defensive point. The, ah. for the defense, when when the time is off, they start like shooting on you to. To stop you and and end the game. Mm, yeah, uh, but in, exactly because they they can do that because they know you can't dump the ball and then continue to run at them. Yeah. So yeah. until then, while there's ten, nine, eight, it's wait, wait. Uh, don't don't make the touch yet. Wait okay. till they can't. Wait oh, till no, they can't roll us. And okay, we want. Okay. I, yeah. I, I just want to avoid that. I want to avoid that ten seconds of just holding back. That's food for yeah, thought for us. I don't think yeah. any any in this room think thought about it. We only have that um, problem because a lot of our games, like our tournaments, our main games have the the, the clock. Um, so we might have yeah. five or six five or six fields that can see the clock and they can actually see how long's left. It probably doesn't make a difference if you can't if you don't have a, a no clock no that oh, yeah. Can see. Uh, we usually don't have it, so we wouldn't know yeah. if there are a few. Yeah, so left. it probably doesn't. Yeah, that's probably why you don't see it. Uh, it's just at our tournaments that we it's gotten to the point now where teams are yelling out jockey. And as soon as you hit the ref, the referees are going, come on, you got to move forward. And the teams are just like, no, nah. <laughs> we're staying right here. Yeah. Uh, if, if, yeah. I can see why people would want to change that. That would be, mm. that'd be particularly at the end of a game. You watch now, you'll, you'll probably, you might notice it at the World Cup. Uh, yeah, we'll do. Yeah, uh, at least I know what to uh, what to expect when I hear the <laughs> you word jockey. <laughs> if you hear jockey, <laughs> it's a, I didn't understand why, but then I was like, oh no, jockey's ride, so it's riding out the riding out the game or something like that, or riding out the half. Yeah, yeah cool. So, um, where were we? We were talking about what was the last thing we were talking about? I completely forgot. Well, uh, I've lost my train of thought. Countries. Oh, tra we we're talking about training. Um, my training. Yeah. Yeah, and how you said most of your players were from the north of Italy. Um, did you have like, was it an open trial to pick these teams or was it kind of like this is a team that's um, sort of continuing on from uh, last year's European champs? Um, 
how does that work? Do you sort of have a retrial or is it who's keen to like, this is our team we're rolling on from the, the last championships because in Australia, we don't really have that many opportunities to play for our country. We have two, we have the world cup and a trans Tasman and that's so every two years. Mm -hmm. So we have a retrial every time. All right. Okay. Um, we no, had a uh, retrial as well. A retrial. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a selection each each time. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you get to kind of the the, the I'd say the, the the upper levels in Italy, it's 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 quite you know everybody knows each other very well. We play okay. against each other regularly, and uh, it's you know each each kind of. Um, uh, tournament is a is almost like a tryout you know the mm -hmm. people can see how each other are playing and obviously you know you, you remember how people play and which people are kind of uh improving or or kind of um really on form uh, so it's it's like a constant tryout anyway through the year but then there are yes um national trials anyway yeah yeah okay so, uh, and these fun, these um these tournaments that you play are you talking like national like Italian national tournaments or do you yeah go... they are well they're regional let's say but regional yeah they are with, with with teams from all over the the country potentially as well um so you might have a team you know you might have Naples playing against a team from I don't know uh Venice it's it's possible at any tournament um yeah okay. I don't know how many tournaments there have been this year but uh, nine ten shall we Carlo tw tw 12th yeah, we have a, actually a restructuring of the championship now this year because uh, yeah. I don't know I don't know about Australia, but uh, it, at least in Italy we kind of had a pre-post COVID phase, and in the last few years it, it's been adaptation after after the pandemic and um, the let's say the board of Italy touch changed this year and, and uh, up until this year we had our national championship was only one. And it was set up in a way that uh, you would gain points, like ranking points at each tournament. And then it would, you know, at the end of the legs, you'll have a ranking list and then you play you play the finals, the finals day, depending on the ranking. Uh, next year will be different. We will have an elite championship and a challenge championship uh, based on the final ranking after the finals. And the finals in Italy are actually this weekend. Oh, okay. And uh, so, uh, so yeah. So this year we had quite a lot of legs for such a sm small, let's say, touch uh, um, scene uh, in Italy. But from next year, we will only have four legs for elite, and I think for also for challenge plus finals. And uh, but to, to answer your question from before, I think at least for the senior mix, we can say that the core team has stayed. Uh, stayed the same, no, Charlie, from last year. Many players were recently, like we did an open trial at the beginning of the season, a couple of uh, open trials. Uh, there were some new additions, well, myself included. I played with the open mix last year and uh, senior mix this year. Um, but I think there is quite a good core group that played at the Euros last year, which ensures also a bit of continuity. Yeah, continuity and and it's basically you've just got a a lot more training sessions under your, under your belt because you're just carrying on the same mm -hmm. team. It was when you're talking mm -hmm. about COVID before we um touch football in Australia, we actually got quite lucky, not lucky, but like compared to a lot of other sports. So we have our nationals, which is regionals teams, come together once a year though, because uh, we have states, we have tournaments under that. Um, but our nationals happen in March, and that goes from Wednesday to Saturday. And we went into lockdown on Sunday. Oh, sorry, on Monday. So we actually got in, got that okay. tournament in, but it was a very weird feeling at the tournament because we were getting announcements that, and we all could understand that a lockdown is coming. So we were like, the tournament's going on as normal, but we're not, we're going to, there's people that don't want to shake hands. So we started doing the elbow bumps and stuff and, and it was just like, is this a joke or is this actually going to happen? And that was pretty much the last thing of touch football until the end of the year, which by then we were back um, out of lockdown. So we touch football didn't actually miss out on a lot um, in Australia, which was good. But uh, our winter sport 
uh, through the middle of the year, that that took a massive, massive hit. So who would be out of these regions in Italy? Is there a a region that's always so dominant? Um, is there someone yes. that... <laughs> yeah. yeah, unfortunately, yes. Uh, yeah, is it, uh, is it the one you guys are at? No, uh, we had the runners up. No, no. <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, we 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 jumped into the ranking. Uh, as I said, I think our first finals were twenty nineteen. If I'm not wrong, was it twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen? Um, nineteen and pre COVID. Yeah, that, we, that's always the yeah. Yeah, as as I said, the, the one before COVID anyway. So yeah, twenty nineteen. And um, we kind of, I think we surprised ourselves a little bit. We kind of outperformed what I think what we should have done. We didn't have any particular structure or we didn't even know how to do sub moves. You know, um, we were kind of fresh into the, as I said, the, the ranking um, scene. And uh, I think we ended up coming fifth that year. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we were, we won something like a surprise team of the year. So we, because before yeah, 2018, exactly. 19, we played like, like Rugby touch, the, the the rugby version of well, not really, just not the international touch rules. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. discovered it uh, that year, so yeah, that was first year for us. So then, from from, Sorry, from that kind of uh, from that from that period, we um, we realized this is something that we could do if we invested, you know, time and energy. But we had to change a lot. Um, we had to completely rethink how we played and, and get used to it. Um, but ever since then, uh, it's been Milan, uh, a team from Milan, which have won for the last seven years, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've, we've come close multiple times. And this year we've, we've beaten them a few times, but not with their full strength team. Um, but they are, yeah, unfortunately just a, uh, a step above um a lot of other teams and if we're having a good day and um you know things are going well we can really push them to the limit but they've got a lot more experience um and they you know can can process the game a lot faster than a lot of our guys we have um i don't know if you remember from the first email uh that i sent our team has got a constant turnover of people uh, so it's very hard to establish, you know, players with more than a few years' experience at all before they move on to do to do something else. Um, and in terms of long term players, myself and Shadi, and and that's probably it in terms of more than five years with the team. Um, so yeah, we we have a a very very um, big mountain to climb every September when we start again. Uh, whereas, yeah, this team from Milan has got, you know, essentially a, gr a group of pure touch players who, who come together and they just know what they're doing. They're very well mm. drilled. And, um, yeah. Any, it's, it's any, a, it's a, any of them, years. any of the Milan team, do they play? Are they in the World Cup Italy teams? Yeah. Are they in yeah, mixed yeah. open? We'll, uh, yeah. Almost all yeah. of them. Yeah. Almost all of them. Almost all of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you, one you, of them you're... is our coach in the mix. Yeah. That's a uh, bit unfair. Regional uh, teams, basically the national team. Oh uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, how often do you get this in sport? Now you know you look at kind of you look at rugby teams across. Uh, I don't know what it's like uh, out there, but uh, very often, yeah, you start getting at least fifty percent of a team that's just come directly from a club because they just they've got chemistry and they play well together. And you go, okay, they might not be the best individual players, but um, they work well together. So yeah yeah but this is just a thing with with not there's not a million clubs in italy as shadi said there's 24 this year so uh, it's um it's and still something which is growing of, and developing one of the brianza player uh was in australia uh this uh this season he, he played at the um, queensland state cup okay yeah he's been i'm there in the other i mean yeah i'm the other state so i'm in new south wales so I think their state oh. cups a couple of months before ours. I think he was. Yeah. He might have been there as well. I don't remember. Big rivalry, uh, but he's been big rivalry between <laughs> our two states, like to the point where when it comes, it's called state of origin, and in our mm -hmm. rugby or rugby league, we call it. We've actually got our 
State of Origin game. It's a three game series, and our game two is on tomorrow. And as the game comes around, the states hate each other. It's like a big, and we have that in touch football as well. We have State of Origin where it's just the best from this state and the best from this state, three games. So every second year. Um, so it's a pretty prestigious competition. But yeah, when it comes around, there's a, it's a, it's a very, very, I guess it's a healthy rivalry, but it's um, an intense one. I've heard that the the the, the, um, the rugby league game things can get a bit uh, a bit out of control sometimes. <laughs> the state well, of origin yeah. is known for, yeah. in our, for in smashing first, the crap out of other people. Then. In our first game, there was a big incident where one of our New South Wales players completely took the head off of a Queensland player and got sent off in the first five minutes. So, <laughs> um, yeah, big incident. Anyway, back to um. Back to World Cup stuff. So, um, do you get any sort of like, tr- like training? Do you get to play like um, France, Switzerland, any sort of surrounding nations in like exhibition games um, throughout the the training process, or is it sort of you just sort of stay um, amongst yourselves and sort of play against each other, sort of internally? How does do you, do you get any of that sort of stuff? Um, this is, uh, can only speak for, for my experience, but I know that in the past, uh, there's, there's a bit of a, um, connection with France, particularly, uh, we have a lot of players who have, uh, played in France and often play in France. Um, so there's a, you know, from places like Grenoble in the South, um, Southeast of France, it's not too far to, to places like Milan at all. It's about three hours or so, um, maybe a little bit more. Um, and so yeah there's a bit of a connection there so there's a bit of kind of overlap very often um, not for the national trainings though we often play against you know uh, the, the mixed open against the mixed 30s which is I always feel a bit unfair but <laughs> we give it a best shot uh, anyway um, so no with, the, with normally the national trainings we, we, we just stick uh, stick to ourselves but um, yeah there's a bit of a kind of international um, collaboration. I think so. that with the, the senior mixed and the mixed open, we went to the, that same tournament last year. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, I mean, it's a French club tournament, so we didn't really play against other national teams. Um, but the French championship is a higher level championship. From, well, it, it wasn't a championship, let's say, tournament, but the French clubs have a higher level than Italian clubs, so. Uh, um, it was a way to uh, to get some get some games, and uh, this year we had uh, England English club uh, coming mm-hmm. to one of our camps a couple of months ago, but That's no really cool. uh, friendly against other national teams. Yeah, that, that was a uh, that was that was interesting. Well, I guess <laughs> a um, reality check, but it wouldn't be, <laughs> it wouldn't be um difficult to organize one. I'm guessing if you wanted to play. Switzerland by the looks of it and just looking at the map now <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah it's 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 amazing yeah. and you said what, what did you say France from Milan was only like a three-hour drive oh yeah um from from Milan through to as I say places like Lyon so no I said Grenoble before but no like Lyon is yeah I think three hours uh if three four hours drive yeah if you, wow. if you take uh unfortunately um, the speed limits in the in the tunnels but apart from that yeah it's, it's pretty yeah it's pretty just direct, um yeah. I've because like where we're from, like we're not technically an island anymore, but we for some reason we're not an island anymore, but we don't have any connecting countries. So um talking to like um Singapore and they said something like, Oh, people go to Malaysia for their groceries. And it's just like it just it's just not normal from like if we wanted to go to another country, it's a four hour flight to New Zealand. Um yeah, wow. You guys with a domestic flight, you you can have a you know like if you're Perth to Perth to Sydney's what's that like six seven hours? I don't know. I reckon but five. I re- yeah, I reckon it's it's quicker for me to get to New Zealand than it is to get to Perth. Yeah. To Perth, uh, exactly, and that's the same same country. So it's as I say, yeah. like when you're talking about like meet, meeting up for national trainings, I can catch a train. How the hell do you do it? For me? There's actually <laughs> there's actually a there's actually a train I can catch to Perth. It takes four days. There's one line. There's a train sounds, line that goes. Wow. Yeah. Well, our training, so 
our training, 90% of our players are from either Brisbane or the surrounding Brisbane area and Sydney or just surrounding Sydney. So our Australian camps, I haven't been to one, but what I think happens is if it's in Brisbane, um, all the money that it costs for the Sydney players to get to Brisbane is shared amongst the whole team. And, or if it comes down to Sydney, all the cost is again, shared amongst the whole team. So it, even if you have to drive 10 minutes to training, you're still chipping in um, money, a, a fair share of money to, to get those people traveling because like that's a, that's a 10 hour drive or a 80 minute flight um, just to get to, to training. So uh, we, we had the same with the open mix last year. Uh, so I think it was after selection was made. So all the camps after selection for uh, all everyone, because most of camps there then were on the north. So for people coming from Rome and even for me flying from Brussels, uh, we shared, well, we, we put a ceiling so that people would actually take the tickets well in advance and not maybe, you know, buy them very last minute, but we put a ceiling on, on the ticket price uh, to make it fair. And, uh, and then we shared it amongst all the players. Yeah. Um, and it's a good idea. A, it's a good, I think fair, a good way, fair yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the other thing that I want to ask you, like in Italy is, is touch rugby recognized as a sport, like in schools, like how, do, you, do you get much junior participation in Italy, maybe Carlo has a Not at all, unfortunately. some feedback there. No, no, no. Apart from the fact that, so we, uh, schools in Italy are not so sport oriented. Um, the sports are not so like important that they're not mm. taking much of the time during school. So yeah, you have physical education, which could be like one or two hours per week, and then you. Um, you do some sports, but like very just to to do some some movement, so um, to 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 make some exercises. But it's not it's not so uh it's not at the level that then you have like uh school championships um uh, kind of kind of thing. Um, so so no for. For especially for for touch rugby, touch football, um, with the the, it's mainly, um, what it has been mainly, for um, people I'd say like, from twenty five above, uh, I guess I don't know what's what's the average age of players in in our championship, but I guess it's around thirty thirty five. Uh, there is one team of of young um guys and girls. Um, they are I reckon they are like eighteen or nineteen sort of, um, which is very good. Um, I mean they're they're improving now. Uh, also they started trying to make a selection. Uh, for the um, uh, there is a yaf competition international competition um in in europe this this year so they're trying to make a selection to go and, and participate with this uh young people there so um it, it's improving but we don't have it's it's not a, a spread um well-known sport within like kids or schools for sure which is kind of like um Absurd if you think that at the end of the day, just to play this this game, you just need a um a piece of uh, I mean um a field and and a ball, a couple of cones to to delimit the area, but you don't need any other special gears to play it. So it will be way easier than I don't know play um actual um uh, rugby union or rugby league or volleyball, backs, basketball, football, soccer. So yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a big difference between uh I, I assume the same in Australia. 
because you guys are like an extremely active like mm -hmm. uh, just population in general but when I came here from the UK and was asking them about their schools and sports and stuff and you know for us sport was a huge part of the day like at school it was yeah yeah do, do the lessons whatever yeah sure but we were kind of living for that that two o'clock to four o'clock period where we'd be playing sport or or the the Saturday where we'd be playing against another school or you know the rivalries against other schools it was always a thing like that and then here it's uh, much more academic focus shorter days and then sports are more done in the clubs externally like outside of the schools um so it's not really integrated into the school system at all mm -hmm. which is a bit of a shame and it, yeah, it, it i think it also shows the problem that we have with uh try because so as it was or as it is until now um touch rugby in italy has always been very much connected to rugby and as an, as an option for former rugby players that are either old rugby players or maybe injured, but mostly like the average age uh, has been quite high. Um, what the new board is trying to do is to shift uh, this perception, yeah? So to kind of show, no, well, touch is, it's an attractive sport for the youth. Um, in fact, I mean, this year, it's the first time Italy has a team at the European uh, Junior Championship. So That's they're exciting. sending an under-18 team. Very exciting. And um, we're trying, I mean, even at club level, we're trying to do our bit. We are actually, right now, I don't know if Carlo was there this morning, um, but we're going to a summer camp, English summer camp, <laughs> for a couple of weeks uh, to have some short, like, touch rugby uh, mornings. And uh, we'll see. I mean, the idea is to kind of try to boost the sports in the schools because, I mean, only in that way, you, you can also shift the, the level at the championship, uh, bring in more like younger players. Uh, and I think even the shift with elite and challenge will, will kind of change that uh, in, in having more, you know, play uh, teams at the same level playing and then uh, make it a bit more yeah, attractive. Uh, mm -hmm. for anyone who wants to join in the sport. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, it needs uh, it needs a lot more uh, a lot more exposure, yeah, unfortunately. Well, you, you have, have the investment through exposure, but yeah. Do you have does Italy have many games on the live stream on one of the fields that are live streamed at the World Cup? Oh, really? Uh, uh, I don't know. No, no. Uh, do you, I, do, actually, I, do I you didn't know? even know if you could check that. Yeah, I was going to say, can, can you check that? Yeah. I checked, but there was nothing. I couldn't see anything in the website. Oh, I just I just assumed that field one and two might have been the, the two fields that they had live streamed. Um, well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping instead of just putting Australia, New Zealand on the live stream because they think that that might be the best quality game, they need to right. uh, consider the impact of the sport of what it can do if you get you can get exposure like if you yeah. come back and, and show someone hey this is italy we just played a world cup check it out and it's you playing fiji or something like that yeah. like that's to me that's good exposure yeah. and that's what yeah. um the federation of international touch hopefully are leaning towards rather than just saying hey this is australia and new zealand for the 50 millionth time <laughs> obviously they're going <laughs> Obviously, we're going to see plenty of Australia and New Zealand come final. So let's put as many nations as we can mm. on on the live stream. Let's give like the goal should be everyone get one stream game. That wouldn't be possible, yeah, but that, sh that, that should be, be the yeah. that should be the thought process. Yeah. yeah. Um. Because we but have, we have there is more than two pitches. Uh, live stream actually. There, there could be. I did hear there was more than one. I just automatically there were made two me with commentary. Okay. I, I don't remember where where I, I read this somewhere. Two with commentary and commentary and two uh, without. So four in total. That's what I heard, but I uh, can't remember the source, so I don't want to confirm anything. But could be more than two. Well, hopefully, the more the better. Hopefully, Com commentary makes it a lot better as well. Like commentary is really good. It's really good to have commentary because you you watch a game without commentary and it's just like you lose interest. Yeah, you also don't have, uh, you know, for, for people who are um, new to the game, maybe you're yeah, mm. watching it and, and you know, they're, they're just like people who are new to rugby, they're struggling to understand why 
you know, there's been a change of possession, why the ball's gone there, what's well, happened. You know, the best so the best example all... is like the Olympics are coming around and I plan on watching as much of the Olympics as I can and I'm going to be watching gymnastics and stuff that I don't know much about. So it'd be nice if there was someone telling me, yeah, oh, they lost a point because of this, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's why the best, the best commentary pairs are always, yeah, someone who's an expert and someone who's much better at the kind of the actual speaking and the presenting. And has yeah, someone who's a, someone who's so you, good at the sport and someone who's good at commentary. Yeah, exactly, and hopefully that's what we'll get in the in the World Cup as well. Because uh, uh, what was it in Elche that um, they actually let us do some commentary? In, in the Euros, yeah. because they had oh, like yeah? a, the, the mic, uh, yeah, beside the pitch uh, on on it was the the pitch that was being live streamed as well. You could just go to the guy and say, "Yeah, can I do the commentary on this one?" You could do it whatever <laughs> language you wanted to, and so uh, yeah, it was, it was quite interesting doing it with a. But oh, yours was, was fun, yeah, Charlie. <laughs> no, I, you gotta, I think you've got to make it vaguely interesting as so, well. Yeah. <laughs> it was a uh, we we had European club championship a european championship for club i think it's called uh this is in spain um pretty much every year so you have the top two or top three teams uh per country ideally then it depends if they're available in the day but uh, mm -hmm. yeah and, uh, and there was this open com um, country uh, station <laughs> that's a good idea uh, it gets gets people interested and in, yeah you got to someone who's played the game, commentating on it a bit. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. You also get to know who people are because you've got a list of list of names and matching the numbers. So it's, yeah, it's quite interesting to get, I'll, get to know. I'll, who go, and, I'll are. go and commentate a, a game where it's a two nations with really, really hard names. <laughs> names, yeah. I was going to say. That, that can, that can you get said really... you worked with... You'd work with the China team? Yes. Yeah, I was going to yes. say some insight. I can tell you about their names. Um, so you get, they have Chinese names <laughs> at the beginning, but then they, they get to choose an English name that they go by. So I okay, referred yeah. on all as their English yeah. names as Johnny, yeah. Andrew, Brandon, like just regular names that I come across. But our captain, he's chosen Dragon as his English name. So it's Dragon. <laughs> now the, right. the, sen <laughs> the, the senior mixed team, um, when they first got together, the second time I was over in China was when we sort of branched off into our teams and we played a little championships in Hong Kong. And the senior mix side, a lot of them was their first time playing a tournament, and they were very raw, like they were struggling. Um, but now they've picked up. Um, there's a couple of guys that from Australia, from from Gold Coast, that uh, qualify, so they're playing in the senior mix side, and it's just it's given sort of each group of players that go on the field someone to guide them because they had one experienced player before but he couldn't be on with everyone so when he had to come off when he was bugging he had to come off they just lost it they, they didn't have anyone they had someone that could be like if you told them to sweep they would do a sweep but they had no idea how to know when anything was to be called um, so they're looking like a touch footy team now that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a, <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's going to be a tough game. Uh, who, whoever's on the other side oh. of the pitch, it's going to be a yeah, yeah. Well, they can be a, a learning process. I... So it's fine. <laughs> well, the guy that's actually coaching, like the actual coach of the senior mix side, is someone that's been on this channel a fair bit when we do sort of the prediction videos. And we have a tournament coming up, and we'll predict the winners and and things like that. He's he's been on the channel and. He's done some interviews uh, around tournaments and stuff like that with some some players as well. So you'd recognize their coach. He'll probably be wearing one of these shirts as well. Uh, hmm. so anyway, you'll, guys, be, nice uh, nice you'll be there, yeah? Me? Yeah, yeah I'll we'll be there. see you in Nottingham? Oh, yeah. You'll definitely see me. I'll be with the Mixed Open. China, Chinese yeah. Mixed Open. I think we're playing... I think we play Italy. I think check. so. Yeah, yeah. You're in the same pool yeah, of yeah. the our open mix. Yeah. And, and Australia. So you're, you're playing for the Chinese mixed open. No, I'm no, coaching. Coaching. I don't call it. Coaching. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah that, no, it's just because you said two guys yeah. qualified for them before. No, so yeah. I don't know. Like, it's funny though. And plus, those... touch, touch, touch rugby is so mixed anyway. You get, you know, uh, yeah. I remember playing the guys, Switzerland. 
one of the guys that um qualifies he's got um chinese parents but he has lived all his life in australia and he says it sucks that when he goes over there to um to train and stuff like that all the locals assume that he knows chinese and they only try to speak chinese to him whereas they see me and they'll just oh i need to speak english so he literally has to be like no i don't speak chinese when he is chinese <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. it's just funny yeah. um and the guy that I coach, his, uh... the, the guy that at one word that we've sort of um learned is migorang that's uh, uh waigorang sorry waigorang is foreigner so <laughs> We point and just go, why go rang? And they go, oh, that way. <laughs> when we're in the airport. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> we, um, yeah, I mean, for a lot of, I think, touch national teams, it's uh, it's kind of mixed up. I have to say, Italy, it's quite consistent with uh, a, lot of, a lot of Italians by nationality and uh, resident. But I think our part, at least the players coming from, from our club, is uh, they're quite quite mixed with English, German, mm. Argentinian, yeah. Chile. But, our, but our, our club is, you know, made of 15 different nationalities. So, you know, it's that's the whole point of our, 18 of our this year, I think, club yeah. team is that it's 18. Is that, you know, it, it was a language exchange originally. So, yeah. Our team's unfortunately lost a few, like, actual, like, proper Chinese players because of visas. Their visa got denied. So we've actually had to, yeah, we've had to replace three players, unfortunately, because they got denied a visa, which is really sad. Um, because that's only that only happened like very recently. Um, so yeah, we got a couple of players that, that, yeah, we got a couple of players that grew up in New Zealand, um, one that grew up in South Africa, but I'd say probably seventy percent of our team uh, are all Chinese, and everyone lives in China too. Like I didn't want to. Like we had the option for these Australian players to come and play mixed open, yeah, play mixed but open. I didn't think it was very fair on a local Chinese person to not play for China and have someone from Australia come in and play. It just didn't make sense. So, mm. anyway, guys, you guys, uh, always an interesting I question. Yeah, I don't mean to be rude, but it's. Past midnight here. Not, you right? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, right. I'm, I'm starting to get a bit yeah. tired. Um, do you have any more <laughs> any questions for me before we um I have to end it because I'm about to you know. Ugh. No, it was good to uh good to put a, a face to a voice that we've been listening to for for quite a while. So. <laughs> well, the first, I was uh, I intentionally did not show my face the first twelve months and um uh, of my channel and even friends of mine that I played on a Monday night with, it took them like nine months to realize it was me. <laughs> They're like, oh but yeah, I'll just watch this. For a short while, we thought you were, uh, you know, <laughs> your voice was Mark Tipple's voice because we, oh. we met him a couple of times. And then, yeah. and then he's been, he's, he's, uh, we've hosted him this September and then we realized that no, <laughs> you guys are not the same person. <laughs> I was I was supposed to coach. Me and Mark were actually in 2019. We were appointed to coach together, um, but he moved overseas and didn't end up um, getting to do the team. So we almost got to coach each other. But I am I am good friends with Mark. He's a he's a very nice guy and he does a lot for the sport. So he will be with France at the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, mm. and he'll be refereeing our finals as well. I heard. Really, uh, this weekend. Oh, this weekend. Again, hurt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on then. Well, right, we'll it was um, we'll really nice to meet you and I'll, I'll definitely come and um, watch watch you guys in a game or two at the World Cup and I'll come say hi. Absolutely. But, uh, Thank you. It'll be a pleasure. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Thanks for, um, thanks for jumping Cheers, online. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Thank you.